everybody. I'm Philip. And I'm Justin. And together we are pajamas. And we are about to embark on episode 10 in season three of Doctor Who. We just uh, wrapped up previously a very good two parter that we both enjoyed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So we're going to see where number 10 takes us. Not spoilers, but I've heard from many people in comments and from my patrons that the back half of season three is uh, their favorite. Not of all, like not of everything, but um, that people like the last or the second half of the season. So I've heard varying uh, degrees of that being said in various ways without getting too spoilery, which I always appreciate. We're gonna put the usual, the usual stuff on the screen now. Uh, it is really, 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 really warm today in the apartment so that's that and yeah that's that and it will be a thing until summer goes away which is not happening anytime soon summer sucks so yes without further ado let's get right into episode 10 and see where the doctor takes us this time and who he bosses around and all that fun stuff that you know i love so without further ado let's get Hello, child. That was a quick rain shower. Yeah. Huh. This uh, feels like it's gothic horror -y. It especially intensified the moment that in order for that to have been written there, it had to have been written before the wallpaper was put up, which would have been a long time ago. Yeah. Huh. All right, you got my attention. Don't look away and don't blink. You just stand there with your eyes open forever. What are you supposed to do? If you can't blink. Mom, I want to dance. They're free. What are you doing? It could be a burglar. A burglar who rings the doorbell. <laughs> Wayne Wright. But she specified that. It's old Paul. 1920. Oh, wow. Oh, there's more than one. Ooh. 1902. I told him you were 18, you lying cow. My mum and dad had gone by your time. Okay, that was weird. Like, you can hear me. Well, I can hear you. Okay, that's enough. I told him I had a family crisis. Why? Because life is short and you are hot. Drink? No. <laughs> Ever? Maybe. You die in the past, and in the present they consume the energy of all the days you might have had. Hmm. All your stolen moments. And all the DVDs I own, the Easter egg was intended for me. You've only got 17 DVDs. <laughs> that's what I thought. 1969. We're stuck. All of space and time he promised me. Now I've got a job in a shop. I've got to support him. Arthur? Sorry. I've seen this bit before. Quite possibly. They're not weeping. They can't risk looking at each other. Hmm. Their greatest asset is their greatest curse. Don't blink. Good luck. And how do you leave? No. We're not looking at the statue. Neither are you. What attack? You keep looking at this one. Don't blink. Remember what he said. Don't even blink. Who blinks? I'm too scared to play. Okay, we're gonna. Break a window. Seriously. <laughs> he tricked them. The doctor tricked them. They're looking at each other. Mm. They're never gonna move again. It gets a bit confusing at times, especially at weddings. I'm rubbish at weddings. Especially my own. Oh my god, of course. Good luck. Very interesting. Hmm. Actually reminds me of the SCP. Hmm. I really like this one a lot. I was not expecting, like, I mean, when I said in the beginning that it felt like it was going to be kind of like horror-esque during the uh, opening credits, it gave off all the vibe and it delivered on that vibe. 
And it was clever of him to have them look at each other. Yeah, that part, like, it didn't register with me yet because I'm still, like, this is all, like, new information. So, I mean, I'd have them all attacking. And then the TARDIS disappears and then, yeah, they're stuck. I was like, ooh, yeah, there's this, this race called the Weeping Angels, a.k.a. the Lonely Assassins. When you look at them, they turn to stone. When you look away, they move. Yes. Huh. That is very cool. That is very, very cool. That's like 110% up my alley. It's very difficult to go against an enemy that, well, one cannot turn away from it or even blink. Like, I hated to sound like I was uh, <laughs> getting irritated there, but I was a little irritated for like a couple minutes there with Sally. Like, the poor guy's just standing there like, you know, his eyes are watering because, you know, he can't blink. I'm assuming he, like, rounded the corner, was just walking backwards the entire time because otherwise he was running away. She, or it. It gets him. So I was like, how did you get to the cellar? But it's a new concept. So, you know, maybe I don't, I don't know all the rules yet. Possibility. You're going to say something? Well, one thing that he could have done was. Oh, yeah. That is true. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Why not do that? Why not just switch by? Open this eye? Close this eye? Open yes. this eye? Yeah. That's one way to. My big smart man. Yeah. That's one way to get around it. There you go. That way you won't have to worry about watering eyes. Yeah. You figured it However, out. However, you will have to walk backwards and somehow not run into anything or trip over anything. Yeah. From then on out, just carry a little pocket mirror with you and just be like, I keep learning how to train yourself to look in the mirror at the same time as you're looking where you're going. Or you can walk with periphery, so yeah. Mm, like with the story of Medusa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just use the uh, shield. Yes. To reflect. And it's the weeping... Angels that are turning to stone instead of yeah. their instead of their prey. Yeah, yeah. Self inflicted Medusa. An interesting concept that they feast on potential yes. energy. Yes, that is. I was like, there's the lore of this. When I said it's up my alley, that's what I mean. Like, this is so well thought out. So well thought out. Potentiality. Mm -hmm. Feeding off of something that could have been or could not have been. Just the 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 world building and the lore for this race, these creatures. It's so intriguing that, as you said, whatever life you had left in the present to the future, they steal, they take from you and send you to the past. It's very cut and dry, but in, inside this bubble, there was so much cool shit that happened, <laughs> you know? To my Whovian watchers, are the Weeping Angels something from the past in, like, in the older episodes? Or is this a new invention in New Who? Let me know down in the comments. Yeah, this might be like the shortest <laughs> discussion after ever because I can't like, it was just so, it was neat. I mean, I'm a huge horror nerd. So, and love the concept, love the design, love the execution of it. Love the twist of why they're covering their eyes, they're not weeping. Love the different poses, how intricate they had to do that and then film it and then move it and then film it and then have all the different ones come in and then film it. I tend to like the ones that aren't doctor centric. Like, I think it was last season, I think it was Love and Monsters, where, like, the group of them got together and she turned into, like, the slab of concrete at the end. But up until then, we enjoyed it a lot because mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. Thankfully, this one didn't end on a very creepy, very uh, contentious <laughs> last scene. But up until then, I really enjoyed that episode a lot. It almost made my medal ceremony, but I, I, went, I went to safe route and I still don't uh, regret my choices. But that is neither here nor there. This is another one that was not, it, it was doctor centric, but it was not as like doctor is, if it was a chessboard, the doctor, it wasn't like, you know, the king on the board this time. You know, Sally was the queen and she was in charge of the chessboard. And, you know, the, then the pieces were being moved around and the doctor was just like a periphery player. And I like that. It's nice to have a break from uh, the doctor every once in a while. But um, yeah, so it was just cool to see someone else kind of have the uh have the focus and i think this is a much stronger much much stronger story than love and monsters was i just thought love and monsters up till the end was charming and the characters are very likable this one story is just ridiculously good one thing this show is very good at very very good at not all the time but when it does it like with the daleks in season one is introducing a villain type character and making them immediately relevant. Within minutes, we saw what the Weeping Angels could do, what they did to Kathy, and we saw the power and, oh, wow. <laughs> immediately, these things were a threat. But this, this is on par to me with the Daleks, like Weeping Angels, if they come, if they come back, it's gonna be like, ooh, 
We're in for it now. What's going to happen now? Two very big thumbs up for me. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. We've had three very strong episodes back to back to back. I've thought of something. They cannot be seen. Mm -hmm. Could they have actually been stopped if there were a spider in the room? Hmm. Hmm. They don't say what kind of eyes have to be on there. Huh. What do you think out there, everyone? If there was a spider in the room, would the Weeping Angel be uh, stopped in its tracks? Since I thought, hmm, considering that it's an old house and clearly not very well sealed, surely something would have made it its home. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, a spider would be the best bet. Unless if maybe that's why in those scenes when they were standing still while the characters weren't watching, maybe that's because something else was watching them. Maybe a bird was flying by the window. All right, would you like to get my notes? Phillips notes. Well, we open up and the doctor is saying, don't blink, don't blink. It's on the wall, you know, and she's peeling the back and her name's there. And that, you know, we see the creepy moving statue. Which, they, again, they did such a good job of taking this, like, inanimate object and making it feel like it was a living thing coming after you. Um, when I said that the lore was very well done, I like how they used the past and the present together to tell the story. With Kathy going back in time, then having to send a message to her grandson in the present. And then with the uh, insistent gentleman who... <laughs> Having to give her a message on his deathbed. Was it necessary to tell me he was going to die when the rain stopped? Damn. Doctor. I, just, I, thought, I thought it was really well done. Just to weave the consequence of what the weeping angels can do into the narrative of the story and then help use that to eventually stop them in the end. I mean, now I saw in my way that she was going to be the one to give all the information to the doctor. But still the way they did that, like he just happened to appear in front of the shop. Very cool that they named the shop Sparrow and Nightingale. Nice touch. Just the way they constructed all the pieces to tell one linear story, including the doctor being in the past, putting his stuff onto DVDs. Like it just, uh, it's, it's very impressive, I think. I also like the idea that the doctor's videos are him having a conversation with her, but he only knows the conversation because the other guy's transcribing it. Like, again, that's just it's so cool. I like that. It's just oh, as you it's pieced together and yeah, really neat. I did like the line sort of, of the guy in the, in, the, in the DVD store saying, you know, girl, go to the police. And she's like, hmm. Then I thought, of all the times to maybe not go to the police, maybe this one. Now it worked out because she met, you know, pushy, not at all smooth. I don't know how to touch that one. It just bordered on like a little too aggressive. I think that's the problem I have with that was the guy was a little too aggressive. <laughs> is that your number? Like, dude, I get it. You think she's pretty. And then another really cool piece of writing, even though I didn't like the doctor saying that the guy was going to die at the end of the rain, I liked that it was the same exact rainstorm he was taken in. And then all these years later, when he meets her again, it's the same exact rainstorm they met in. Just so cool. I had a nitpick. I wanted to nitpick really aggressive guy getting her number. But it's fine. Not everyone can uh, be written the way I would like, obviously. <laughs> I suffered through two seasons of someone like that. So I can, it, it, this is a one-off. It's fine. It's fine. If I didn't pick anything, though, when Sally was running around while the other guy had to stare at the statue, that was some, like, slow-ass motherfucking Jeff. If you get it, you get it. Levels of, like, just fucking do something. Just do something. Like, I, I said, break... I wrote... I wrote, I wrote Break a window. <laughs> Break a window. Do, do something. This poor dude is standing there. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Oh, there's a, there's a seller. What? I know, I know, I know. It just annoyed me. There should have been a little, a little more urgency. <laughs> I wasn't sure how long he would have been able to be I in know, that staring yeah. contest. It was like she was so concerned with, obviously, Trying to escape, but she also, but she didn't seem very concerned with trying to escape. If if you get what I'm saying, now granted they went down in the cellar and the and the TARDIS happened to be there, so that it, it was supposed to happen like that. But a little more urgency, I think, because everything else in the episode was so strong, decisions and reactions and all of it just worked. Uh, I, I think that's why it stuck out to me, just because everything else was so seamless. That was kind of like, like I know they're stalling for time to get 
the suspense up of him staring that long. But I think it could have been written a little tighter and still gotten to the seller in some way. Like, it just felt like, it just felt weird. It just felt off to me. When they're in the, uh, the, the shop together, she says, it's just a shop, nothing more. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote, guy harasses her, interested. Guy helps her save their lives, not interested. And I'm not saying that it, there's a correlation. Like, you don't have to, because somebody's nice to you does not mean you owe them anything. You know, the whole nice guys thing and nice girls thing. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this. And in, in, in this narrative of this story, it was just kind of stuck out. I found it amusing that when uh, the doctor and Martha were trying to go do whatever they're going to do at the end, they had bows and arrows. I'm like, what are you fighting that you need a bow and arrow? <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> that was funny. I actually would like to know if that's an episode. Is it a... Yeah. A little Easter egg to the future for us. A little hint at a future episode as they go fight four things and a lizard. Hmm. But yeah, uh, that is all for my notes. Everything else in there is for my patrons over on Patreon. Fantastic episode. Absolutely fantastic. This could have been a two-parter and I would have had no complaints at all. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. So did I. I'm going to assume this is a fan favorite. This can't be one of those ones that we like, but then everyone else hated. This can't be. This has to be a fan favorite. So if it is a fan favorite, sorry we didn't talk more about it. If you expected more, it was just so neatly packaged in like a 45 minute box that you just, it's more of like admiring what we saw. You know, there's no, there's no real deep dive yet. Now, if they come back and we get more lore, then yeah, we'll have something to call back on. For a brief moment, he did describe time. Mm hmm that it's yeah. more like a ball mm -hmm. instead of being a linear line. Yeah, yeah. Which would make sense how the TARDIS can then move inside this ball. Is there anything else you'd like to add with this episode? No. Okay. Well, I was going to wrap this one up. Uh, we're going to go turn the AC back on because it is hot as in the apartment right now. We need to go cool down and make lunch. So as always, I don't have a fancy outro. So I'll simply say thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.